Good morning. I'm Pastor Larson with Trinity Lutheran Church in Delray Beach, Florida, and I invite you to our worship. We can have you worship in person at 8.30 and 10.30, or if that doesn't work for you right now, then uh, just go to trinitydelray.org slash live, and you'll find the worship services there at those times. And I'm also inviting you this morning, uh, it's morning to us, to the Bible study, and we do it live on Saturday, and you can watch it Sundays at 10 a.m. or anytime on YouTube. So here we go with the question that we're trying to answer for everyone's spiritual benefit, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? And right now, we're answering the question, who is Jesus? based on a study of the miracles that he performed. One proof of the divinity of Jesus, and that's really our subject, is the miracles he did. He did many miracles and signs, as the Apostle John calls them, among many witnesses. Some of these are recorded in the gospel records. Not all of them. So we are reading those public miracles of Jesus that show him to be the Son of God with power. The miracles point us to his divine nature. They also show us his compassion and love for people, for real people. So our prayer is that you will accept this witness the Lord has left for himself. Who is Jesus? The public miracles of Jesus, I want to repeat from the previous two sessions, show and reveal, and we will say prove, that Jesus is the Messiah prophesied in the Old Testament. Because the miracles that the Old Testament said he would do, he did. And no one else did. Who is Jesus? Well, before we read more of his miracles, I want to repeat a couple of verses from John's Gospel, chapter 10. What did he, that is, what did Jesus say about the miracles that he was doing? The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. They point to him. They announce him. The word to bear witness is martyreo, and the word means martyr, <laughs> but not all witnesses die when they're making witness. But he's saying, not I, but the works that he is doing make a witness about him. They speak, even though there are no words. In the second passage, a little bit later in John chapter 10, if I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. That inseparable, inseparable connection between the Father and the Son, one God, eternal, without beginning and without end. Well, that's a lot of theology, isn't it? But again, the important part is that the works point to the divinity of Jesus. So now I am going to invite you to join me in reading about uh, almost a dozen miracles if we get through them today. Someone read, please, from Matthew 9, 22, 20 to 22. Okay, I'll start. It cures the women with the issue of blood. And behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she said to herself, if I only touch his garment, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. 12 years. None of the physicians could 
secure. Here. Take heart, your faith has made you well. She believed if she would only touch his garment. And there are the, the photographer, right. The artist has depicted what it might have been like, Jesus in the crowds of people. And she has made it well. I think you remember that uh, one of my favorite Psalms, and I think yours too, is Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, and that's the main thing, isn't it? And then, right after that, who heals all your diseases. And I often say here that you and I have had many diseases during our lifetimes. I don't think anybody goes a lifetime without being sick. Some people say that I've never been sick. Uh, well, a lot of diseases come and go without our even knowing it. Jesus is the Lord. And that's the connection I'm making. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. He heals all your diseases. And we, we read of Jesus healing diseases. And that points to the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the Lord God of the Old Testament, the second person of the Trinity. He not only forgives us, he heals our diseases. Well, Pastor, what about the people who die with a disease? That disease doesn't get healed at all. Oh, yes, it does in the resurrection. Okay. And he redeems our life from the pit. The pit is the grave. And you and I know and believe and trust and uh, look forward to the fact that we will not stay in the grave, but when he comes, he will raise us and all believers and give us everlasting life. He redeems our life. He has paid the price. That redemption word is really important in the New Testament. And in the meantime, he's crowning us with steadfast love and mercy. You read Psalm 103, and you'll break out in a smile and a word of praise. I almost can guarantee it. Well, what about these two blind men? Another reader, please. I can read. Please, Joanne. Re Restore sight to two blind men. And as Jesus passed on from there, two blind men followed him, crying aloud, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it done to you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, See that no one knows about it. But they went away and spread his fame through all the district. Thank you. Here, I wonder. I wonder why he didn't want people to know. All right. The uh, the the hard answer is when his fame spread abroad, the understanding came amongst the people that he was going to stay among them and and be a healer and be a provider and and he and he was but you and i know that his main reason to come was to die now that death would have been hastened although god was in control all the time if his fame spread abroad then his enemies would come and try to do away with him so what's sometimes called a messianic secret jesus did not keep it a secret but he kept it amongst those to whom he wanted it to be revealed. When he did miracles, he didn't want that to be the main thing, but his main thing was to die and rise again. That's my best answer to that, Joanne. I think the answer becomes more complicated as the theologians wrestle with it. His witness after his resurrection when he commanded them to go and be witnesses of all he had said and done, 
then he released them from that restriction. Does that, does that satisfy in some sense? Yes. Okay. I want you to notice that faith was here um, almost as a prerequisite. Do you believe I'm able to do this? In other cases, the person who is healed is not even aware because Jesus is, is in another place as when he healed the centurion's son. All right. Another one. That Jesus is a healer of diseases is well documented in the Gospels. Let's continue with two miracles that show Jesus as <coughs> provider of food for the masses and you know which two miracles you these are don't you right here are the five thousand uh, another reader please feeds five thousand people now the day began to wear away and the twelve came and said to him send the crowd away to go into surrounding villages and countryside Excuse me, to find lodging and get provisions, for we are here in a desolate place. <coughs> but he said to them, you give them something to catch. They said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we are to go and buy food for all these people. <coughs> Do I continue? Please. For there, for there were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50 each. And they did so, and they had them all sit down. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up the heaven and set a blessing over them. <coughs> then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And they all ate and were satisfied. And what was left over was picked up 12 baskets of broken pieces. A miracle beyond our understanding. Hmm. Does the Lord still multiply the loaves and the fishes today? Does he feed this world of people? Uh, <clears throat> yes, he does. Yeah. What we have, someone said long ago, is not a supply problem, but a distribution <laughs> problem. That's not a political statement. That's a farming statement. And um, the work that is being done by various groups around the world to bring food to those who have it not, and in cases of famine or disease, there is a huge amount of, of mercy being uh, shown to the people who have less and who have little or have none. And uh, there will always be famines, there will always be shortages, there will always be people afraid, and there always will be God who wants to feed them. Our job is, is uh, distribution mm -hmm. of what God brings forth from the fields. Um, Pastor, that's happening right now for all the people right here in Palm Beach County, mm -hmm. uh, the food banks or the, you know, the driving up of food is not as much as in, uh, you know, May and June, but they're still happening for people that have no food. Yes, the food banks have been in operation for a long time. As a pastor in West Palm Beach, I many times would uh, send people there or to the places that the food bank supplied such as the Lord's Place, which I believe is still operating. I haven't seen anything about it. Yeah. And Cross Ministry uh, has several distribution places. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think our own church this summer, earlier in the summer, uh, provided um, a space for, um, they had, what, uh, truckloads of fresh vegetables because the restaurants were shut down that they distributed out in the parking lot. Yeah, my remembrance, it might be, might be wrong. I thought they had over 20,000 meals distributed. Yeah, and, and then they also had the meals besides that. And I'm sure that's still going on if restaurants, you know, have to pull back. 
the farmers aren't selling um, vegetables like they used to and that sort of thing. And the gleaning, I don't think, well, gleaning probably isn't going on, but when health is normal, we glean the fields, which is a, a biblical thing. And thousands of pounds of uh, food are um, brought in. That's right. When I lived in the uh, glades, I saw that. So um, Jesus uh, feeds 4,000 people. That's different from the other miracle, isn't it? Go ahead and read that someone, please. Uh, I'll read it, if that's okay. Okay, Chris. Uh, Matthew 15, 32 to 39. Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I am unwilling to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. And the disciples said to him, where are we to get enough bread in such a desolate place to feel so great a crowd? And Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? And they said, seven and a few small fish. Please go on. And directing the crowd to sit down on the grounds, he took the seven loaves and the fish and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied, and they took up seven baskets full of broken pieces left over. Those who ate were 4,000 men, besides women and children. And after sending away the crowds, he got into the boat and went to the region of Magdan. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So there's... The, the miracles are uh, different, they're distinct, uh, but mm -hmm. they have the same result that there was more left over than they had when they started. Do you have that problem with leftovers? <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately. Uh, not at my house. Well, you know, when you had a family at home, <laughs> you, <laughs> you might have said, better eat it now or you're gonna see it tomorrow. <laughs> when the kids were a little fussy. Remember those days? Yeah. Um, I don't want to go back to those days, <laughs> but they were fun when we, oh, put a little more butter on it. <laughs> so, uh, try to make it palatable. It's, it's uh, interesting uh, uh, how children can be with food. It's one of the few things they have that they think they can have control over and they'll exercise it just to show uh, <laughs> their independence. <laughs> well, and we're not talking about children. We're talking about the miracles of Jesus. And these two show that Jesus has compassion on the crowds who are hungry. It's a simple thing. And he has power to multiply the loaves and the fishes. Or fish, if you prefer. Um, can I bring up something? Yes. Um, oh, we're going on to another one. No, but, no, but go ahead. The 5,000, didn't they follow him over to Capernaum? Not this 4,000, but the ones before? Yes, you're referring to John chapter 6, which repeats yes. uh, uh, the kind of the end of that. And they, and they follow him. They want to make him uh, king because he can feed them. And he oh, said, yes. you are only following me because I fed you. <laughs> yes, yes, just bringing That's, that up, you know. Yeah. You're remembering John chapter 6. That's good. Yes. Thank you. No, bring up anything that comes along the line. If it's too far off, I'll, I'll say we'll talk about that more off screen. All right, you're, uh, you're important to me that you uh, participate to where your minds and your hearts go. Uh, this is uh, <clears throat> one of uh, the verses that came to mind uh, this week when I was talking with someone on the phone about the provider. Jesus, Lord, provider. The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong, for the Lord upholds his hand. And then this wonderful thing. <laughs> I, true. I have to say it with a little bit of a tear in the corner of the eye. I have been young and now I'm old. Yet, and here's the point, I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread because the Lord provides. The Lord provides. 
I don't know, I want you to know that, believe it, hang on to it, put it, <laughs> put it on your mantle or over the door of your kitchen <laughs> where the food is. All right, Psalm 37, especially verse 25, write it down, write it down. Write it down on your hearts, people. So who is Jesus? Well, he is a one who heals. Someone who hasn't read or start around again. It's up to you guys. I'll, I'll start it around again. <clears throat> and behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as your desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. Why didn't Jesus answer her when she cried out, have mercy upon me? Because she wasn't a Jew? Well, that's the first answer. She was a Canaanite. And he said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Ouch. But Jesus um, already knew what he was going to do. Right? He is testing her faith. And well, you know, there's a simple little thing. She knelt before him, and generally somebody would not kneel before somebody unless they felt they were of great importance also. Or, 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 it's, or, or you know, we all say as Christians, we're only going to kneel before the Lord. Right. That's and right. So she, she, honored believed. That. she honored him by that posture. She honored him and believed that he could answer. She was willing to take a crumb if that's all she could get. To call a person a dog in that time, as all always in the, also in our time, is a real put down. <clears throat> Now, when, when you had a dog and you told your children it is not right to take your bread and throw it to the dogs, you eat it. <laughs> they didn't, uh, the dogs didn't like the broccoli. Uh, but, but seriously, her face is even the dogs eat the crumbs. I'm willing to take a crumb from you. Right. And the crumb was this, this wonderful healing of her daughter. Jesus did not restrict himself to, to addressing the Jews. And it becomes clearer and clearer as you read the Gospels that he came for all people. But he is a Jew speaking to Jews, and his, his first emphasis was to call apostles who were of the Jewish descent. Okay. Well, I don't want to go into that. That's another another subject. Um, yeah. So here's another uh, healing of the, the deaf and the dumb. And dumb here does not have anything to do with intelligence or learning. Uh, another reader, please. Okay, I'll read again. Restores one deaf and dumb. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be open. And his ears were open, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more ze ze zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He 
even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. <clears throat> and this was predicted of him in the Old Testament. And now he has, he has done it. And here's the thing that you asked about before, Joanne. He charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they <laughs> proclaimed it. If you were healed uh, of a disease uh, so that you could not hear and you had a speech impediment, uh, people who study this uh, tell us that the speech impediment comes in part because we don't hear uh, the accurate words. You cannot say with your mouth what you cannot hear with your ears. Hmm. Would uh, some of you medical people, or if you had a, had contact with people like that, would you verify that? I, I don't necessarily know enough about that to really comment on it. Okay, good answer. That's, that gets neurologically pretty complex. <laughs> yeah. And, and what we don't know is, was he deaf and without speech from the beginning? Because right. if he was born deaf, I'm mm -hmm. not sure how any speech would have come from him. Mm -hmm. Unless miracle. That... Go ahead. Miracle. A miracle. It, it, a miracle, right. Yes. But I mean, when, when Jesus comes upon him, when they brought this man to him, if he were born deaf, I... I'm guessing that his speech impediment came from the deafness, but we don't know. So the the big word in here is ephatha. Change the PHs to Fs and you'll never have, never have trouble pronouncing it, except the um, accent is on the E, ephatha. Yeah. -E. Pastor, has anyone read a, a in book, or what I have not, about Helen Keller? You know, that's, oh. that's a, an example even and, and that whoever developed did she develop sign language or was sign language before that can't answer that she anyone was blind too wasn't she can anyone answer that can't remember i can't either well, i have i have to do some research my memory doesn't no yeah. was there a movie a long time ago oh yeah helen oh, yeah. keller story the yeah. helen keller story it was uh, Memories fade, but Jesus yeah. opened, he opened what was closed. <laughs> Another one, restore sight to a blind man. And they came to Bethesda and some people brought him to a blind man and begged him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. <laughs> Jesus laid his eyes again, and he opened his eyes. His sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly, and he sent him to his home saying, do not even enter the village. Another miracle. He can heal the blind. <clears throat> Interesting that it took two applications. One of the spittle on his eyes and then a second touch. Many years ago, I read a book that was entitled the Second Touch by <laughs> Keith Miller. <clears throat> I see people, but they look like trees walking. What, How would he know what trees look like unless he had sight before? Good, good observation. Another miracle, cast the demon. I'll, I'll read that. Um, Luke 9, 38 to 43. And behold, a man from the crowd cried out, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son, for he is my only child. And behold, a spirit seized him, and he suddenly cries out. 
It convulses him so that he foams at the mouth and shatters him and will hardly leave him. And I beg your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, O oh, faithless and twisted generation, how long am I to be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon threw him to the ground and convulsed him. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the boy and gave him back to his father. And all were astonished at the majesty of God. Hmm. This is something that you and I do not see unless you will tell me that you've seen this in your lifetime. I have not. No. Well, why couldn't the disciples do it? Because his comment was he tried the disciples and I thought they were doing things too. But, and then he called him unfaithful. He, he did give power occasionally to the disciples or especially to the apostles to go out and heal. The word generation there is not like we use the word generation. Um, it's the, the people of, the, of this time, not um, as in um, the second and third generation of that grandfather, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's these kinds of people who do not believe. Now, the fact that the disciples could not meant to me and I can't prove it from the sentence, that he had not given them power and authority to do it. Mm -hmm. um, you do get the impression when you read the Gospels that the disciples were always with Jesus, but that's not true. That there were times when they were apart, and there were times when he sent them to do work for him in his name. I suppose it is because they only had power when he had given it to them. That's my best guess for that answer, but I don't have it. I can't prove it, prove it from this text. How long am I to be with you and bear with you? It sounds like impatience, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, yes. Well, I said it, but uh, the Lord is not impatient but his will is that we believe him and that he can do these things. But he doesn't refuse. Bring your son here. Yeah. He, he bears with the, the faithless generation that does not fully comprehend and believe all that he is because he knows the time will come when he will be fully revealed to them and he will send the Holy Spirit, and their faithlessness will dissolve into faith. Faith in Jesus is not a process. It is a happening. And then there is the process of trusting him more and more for more and more things and for more and more healings and for more and more uh, of his ability to provide. And that is something that does grow in our lifetimes, as I'm sure you can all attest. And then fear comes in and sneaks underneath the door once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I'll tell you, no, I won't. <laughs> uh, restores 10 lepers. Well, back backing up to to the fact that he uh, he he himself took care of the demon would it be because he was really the, the demon to me almost seems like truly the de the devil himself and that it was like it was a fight between um christ and the devil directly when uh this demon uh was in this child i can't prove that from the text it's possible this little word a here is not <laughs> Jesus speaking, but the, well, the father, right? Yeah. So that's all he knows is that a, some kind of spirit. Okay. But I can't prove that the reason that he 
can't that he's the, <laughs> the devil himself. Well, the, de the devil. See, demon is a general word and the word Satan is not there and the, and the word for the devil is not there. That's true too. So I can't prove it and uh, I don't want to say definitely. It's kind I'm, of one of those, yeah. It's bad enough that he has uh, possession. Mm -hmm. Now someone will ask me, um, you haven't yet, but I'll pretend that you asked me. <laughs> That do we have still have demon possession today? And my, my simple answer is yes, we do. I don't believe it's very common, or it may be in other countries and that we don't see it here. And I, and I can't tell you why or why not. Um, I really, uh, I have not studied it in detail. I don't have the power of exorcism, but there's a couple of times that I've met people that I, I surely thought they must be some kind of possession here, hmm. then you find out that it is a disease of the brain and it's chemical or it's due to injury. And then you say, well, maybe it's not a possession. It's a, it's a true disease, huh. a physiological disease. And then there are, are mental diseases, many of which I believe are truly physiological in nature and cause, but I haven't studied medicine. So yeah, that's true too. I can't say that. The imbalances in the hormonal system trigger all kinds of messes inside of people. Mm -hmm. And they just don't understand themselves. And then you bring on drugs and alcohol and you complicate the picture even more. Or uh, lack of nutrition. You, you've studied life, all of you, even if you didn't go to uh, nurses training to know that all of these things are true, or maybe you've even looked them up on the internet by now. So there's so many causes. And for a given, for a given observation of a certain person, there may be many causes of what's going on in that one person. Uh, sir, I, I, Judy would have to back me up on this because I haven't studied it in a long while, but. You know, I think with older people or even not older people, a lack of vitamin B can make you feel like you're mentally ill or, you know, to other people. And it's really a lack of vitamin B. And I'm not talking thiamine thing, but I'm talking uh, general. Oh, uh -huh. Vitamin D. Get out in the sun. D. Not D, B, B, like in boy. B. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, yeah. all right. Um, yeah, I've heard of that. Um, and there's a whole group of them, but whatever. I take a multivitamin every day, yeah. religiously. I take all kinds of things. I, I, I keep the pill factories going. <laughs> Generally, when a mother gets pregnant, they make sure they have adequate vitamin B. Also, it's usually in there multiple vitamins for um, neurological development. So, mm. prenatal care very important. So let's not. Uh, go too far with the medicine. I, I tend to be very interested in the, the medicine behind the miracles, but you know, I wasn't there. Luke was <laughs> later on. He <laughs> interviewed these people who were ill. <clears throat> 10 lepers. Uh, this is the one that we would uh, often be having on Thanksgiving. It is every year it's the 10 lepers. And why don't... Uh, <laughs> Every Thanksgiving, and I thought, can't we have another text for Thanksgiving? You know, all those years of having Luke 17. Someone read that, please. Two pages. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went away, they were cleansed. On. Then, one of the, then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice and fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. And when Jesus answered, 
were not 10 cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to them, rise and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. We had talked about skin diseases uh, a couple of weeks ago, so I will not go into detail today. Um, but this this healing, I'm not concentrating today on the fact that only one was returning to give thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Now that comes up because Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, um, right on or near the border. So one of the lepers was a Samaritan. And that is made plain when Jesus asked, there was no one found to return to give praise to God except this foreigner. So this is the response that we all owe the Lord uh, for each and every one of our healings. When you're getting better, return thanks. Remember that their healing did not, your, your healing is coming from him. Even though many medical people and medicines have come in between the two of you mm -hmm. and when this vaccine uh that's coming soon we all hope and believe comes it the glory should be given always to the lord who provided the means and the intelligence and the equipment and oh a tons of research uh, science, medical so. information that goes back decades. Go ahead, please, Chris. No, I was just going to say you have to give science also in that group because that's what all you're talking about, science. science, Our science the, the word science means knowledge, and the knowledge comes from God, and he reveals it to us in, in the case that you're talking about through research. And research is, is kind of tinkering uh, is tinkering with the, the molecules and the, and the cell structure in this case. And how, do you know how complex a cell is? If you go and study cell biology, well, the words are too long for my head that, that they use, but I'm amazed that anybody can comprehend any of it. Well, that, that uh, pastor was what um, fascinated me in studying to become a dietitian. And, and actually I didn't do much good after being one, I think, but you know, the study of it was fascinating and it's called, it's, you know, biochemistry, really, it's fascinating. Okay, biochemistry. Um, several years mm -hmm. ago, uh, they attracted uh, new research development uh, up here in the north part of the county. And they, they did it to bring jobs, but I know that it is being used of the Lord to bring research into many diseases. And um, we, we solve these. <laughs> we, we figure out what's going on and we find cures or, or therapeutic uh, medicines that allow people to, to live with them. Right. I won't get personal. Blindness is a terrible thing. I sometimes ask you, I ask people, uh, would you rather be blind or deaf? And if you had to choose one, and most people would choose, I believe, tell me if I'm wrong, most people would choose to hang on to their seeing if they had to give up one of those two. Yes. Where does most of your knowledge come from? Most of what you take in, information. Seeing? I think so. Yeah, we see, we read, right? Vision, yeah. the people, the people are observations with the people around us, observation. You have to see in order to interact with people. One of the things that we're missing 
uh, due to our separation from each other, is seeing face to face. Yeah. I am not seeing you face to face. I see an electronic picture of you on my screen. And that's not the same as seeing your face. It's not the same. And uh, uh, boy, we all need hugs. Oh, when this thing ever gets released, <laughs> I, I contradicted myself in that sentence. When this thing is finally released, I think there's going to be an outpouring of a lot of hugging. <laughs> oh, man, we're just not going to be going to take a while to catch up. Sometimes I tell Jeannie, I'm about five hugs short today. <laughs> tell her you she know. needs to give you a few more hugs. Yeah. And if you live alone, and you know, I, I know I'm talking mostly to people who live alone, and I, I'm sorry about that. I am so blessed. And I'm not going to bring it up to make it hard on you. Well, let's talk about the man born blind. Let's go on. A reader, please. Who's next? Um, I'll read again. Please. Uh, okay. Uh, heals a man born blind, John 9, 1 to 7. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day, night, day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. It is a miracle to restore sight to the blind. Now, John chapter 9 continues for a very long time. And it's one of the miracles that get Jesus into um, a lot of dialogue and and it gets this man who was born blind into dialogue with the unbelieving Jewish people. And he keeps witnessing to the fact that it is Jesus who healed me. But I just wanted us to look at the miracle itself. I am the light of the world. He said that in a different place, but now he says it in conjunction with the light that brings sight. There is no sight without light. To me, the eye is one of the miracles of creation. That the eye is able to take in images and transmit them to the brain where the brain interprets them. And a lot of uh, a lot of things go on in between those two. It's amazing. You think of a newborn child who comes who comes into the world, and uh, and eventually the eye can see, and everything that newborn eye sees is brand new, without interpretation. And a lot of learning goes on. And there's in those first days and, and weeks and months as that young child, that baby learns, this is mother's face. It's one of the most important things they ever learn. And that face loves me. The bonding that goes on with that look. And it continues as, as things and objects and sounds, uh, I'm not talking about hearing, but the, the interpretation. Uh, a slamming door is at first a, a threat, but eventually it's understood as something that just happens and is no longer a threat. You know, the, the interpretation of, of things that we take in through our senses takes a long time. What you have now, hmm, beside knowledge, the experiences of your senses that give you information. It's you a know, Patrick, I, I just want to 
interject again, and I'm so sorry. But no, don't psych- apologize. I want you to do this. <laughs> psychology uh, is is trying to help us poor humans understand, you know, what God already knows. But take the case of a baby who isn't um, uh, uh, loved by her mother or, or his mother, and, and uh, that bond is not there. There's always psychological implications thereafter. Um, they say, I don't yep. know. That's what they say, you know. Right. And and so psychology developed up to help us understand that also, without. Um, well, I don't know about without just right. Pure. Psychology is largely the uh, science of observation, and and testing. Uh, yeah. Experiments. Um, all right, we could tell stories. A man born blind is healed. Now, here's a woman with a disabling spirit. You know people who are disabled? Yes, you do. Go ahead and uh, read whoever would like to. Now, he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman who had a disabling spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not fully straighten herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your disability. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and she glorified God. Mm-hmm. She couldn't fully straighten herself. I don't know what kind of disease that is. A bone disease. Could be scoliosis. Could be. No, it, uh, it's in my family, and I always worry about it, where you're, you know, it's a it's an osteoporosis thing, and, and it can't hold up the top of your body, and you bend over, and your shoulders bend over. I mean, Judy, you must know all about that. Yeah, about that. I was, I was even thinking there's, you know, palsies where people can't sit up straight and control right, right. muscles, mm-hmm. and even your strokes. But, but it's, it's a, it, it, it's a, some people are my my brother before he died was bent over at his waist mm-hmm. looking at his knees correct yeah and it was it was yes. like he, he knew what was going on there was nothing wrong with his brain but his body gave out yeah mm-hmm. so the bone structure support yes yeah oh, yeah disabling spirit all right, now uh, we get to uh, draw a line as when one adds up numbers. And um, and the thing that we call that when we draw a line uh, at the bottom of the column of numbers is called a sum. A sum. So that's what I want to do in our closing minutes today and see if we can get this because I have more material. Um, I sat down early week and uh develop uh, some more material for us on this question but right now gathering all these miracles together in one place and reading them one after another is an experience that most of us have never had before is that true of you there's never studied the miracles one after another yes correct With me. <laughs> yeah there's always other things interspersed in between i'm thinking sunday school right yeah. one after another Sure. So this is what we've been doing. And our reason is to answer the question, who is Jesus? And I know you know the answer, but I know that many people don't. And I want to equip you for your own faith and for possible uh, instruction in the faith of others. So here's my first question. What were the reactions of those who saw Jesus do these signs? What kind of reactions do you recall? Like a test, isn't it? Amazed, yeah. Gratefulness, gratefulness. Sometimes amazed. Belief. Amazed. Belief. Oh. Yeah. Faith. Faith. Right. Um, Others. They had. Uh, they uh, some had a desire to share the information. Right. They wanted to witness. Yeah. Witness. Right. Other reactions. Uh, of course, the Pharisees was was a was a negative. 
Well, they challenged him, especially when he did it on the Sabbath. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or when he said, your, um, your sins are forgiven you. Didn't like that. <laughs> okay. Here are some of the things that I went back and I looked at them all. And there was fear, fear gripped people. Now, it's not the kind of fear that says afraid I want to run away from him, but it's the fear of, of the awe. Uh, it's the mouth wide open in, oh, how could this be? A great prophet has risen among us. Amazement, you mentioned. Faith, you mentioned. They witnessed. We, you mentioned that as well. And I think someone said they were astonished. Right. Those are the ones I saw. Did you see any others? Okay. Who is Jesus? To sum it all up, why are these miracles and signs written for us? Remember what John said at the end of his gospel? So that we know that Jesus is the Christ, the Lord. You got it, Joanne. Read it. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. There you go. That's the, that's the verse that you, your mind went to immediately. Jesus did many signs that were not written in the Gospel of John. He picked out nine of them, and he witnessed those to the people who read his Gospel. And the other disciples, now, did I promise to send you a list of the uh, 37 miracles of Jesus in chronological order? I looked up, to try it. found it. Uh, you found it? No, I said, if you found it, you were going to send it to us. Yes, I had it, but I didn't have it in a form that could be attached to the to the email that I send on Saturday or Sunday or Monday, if I remember it. And um, last week, I sent it on Saturday so that I wouldn't forget. But I can, uh, I mean, the slides. So not only you, but the also the other, hmm, the others that are not online with us who see it later, or maybe who don't even watch this, can also look at them if they want to, or they can erase it. Pastor, yeah. um, rather than you rewriting them, you could take your phone and take a picture of it yeah. and attach it to the email. Yes, I have a picture of it. Um, okay. you know, I got it off the internet. Uh -huh. it's convenience, it's a lot of work to assemble such a thing. And I have it now in a form I think it's a PDF document that I can attach to the email. And I hope you don't have trouble opening attachments. And if, if it is, I'll, I'll put the picture in the email. I try not to send people attachments because people have problems opening them or they're afraid to. Well, let's, let's stay on the, on the subject, but I want to let you know that I have it and I intend to send it to you. And you can look the ones up that we didn't read. Okay. Okay, now who is Jesus? Again, what do the miracles and signs show us about Jesus? To, the word manifest is not used a lot by people. It just means show. But it's a, it's a wider showing. It's a big showing. Jesus sure. manifested his glory, that is, revealed himself to be the Son of God, with power, I should add, and the Redeemer of the world. His glory is the sum total of all of his attributes, including his love for people. And I want to say something else about these miracles. I want to say it by asking you a question. The fact that Jesus came upon these people, what does that show us about, show us about ourselves? The fact that we need healing. What does that point to about us? We're fallible. More than that, that's true. Sinners. We're sinners. Yeah. Yeah. We we need his forgiveness, and we're and, broken. Yeah. We're broken. We need his forgiveness. 
And we need to believe. And we and and not only do we need his forgiveness, but he gives us his forgive gives us our forgiveness, and we can start a day new again. Every which, day. Yes. Which is uh, the hope, the good hope that we have. He gives us hope. The fact that Jesus heals is is a, is a, his power and his authority over everything, including everything that goes on in your bodies. So now here it shows us that we live in a fallen world, that we wait for the revealing of our glorious body in the resurrection in which there will be no disease, no illness, no need for vaccinations. <laughs> We just, we will live as God intended us to live, but we have to wait for that. And while we wait, <coughs> we hurt and, and we are unable to do all the things we used to be able to do. I was young once. <laughs> so we're all all right, right. not going to be personal. These accounts of his miracles <laughs> were not cunningly devised fables, but the truth the disciples were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Peter is the one who wrote those words. So who is Jesus? Well, I'll ask you this question. If the miracles were the only thing you knew about Jesus of Nazareth, would that be sufficient to bring you to believe in Jesus as your savior? No, because you need the, the crucifixion and the resurrection. Thank you, Joanne. That's what you're <coughs> lacking. But you'd, you'd get, he would get your attention, wouldn't he? Yeah. If, if you are talking to someone who doesn't believe that he died and rose again for them, you could start with the things that he did to improve the lives of many and still does. Right. It's not a proof, but it sure would get their attention. Who is Jesus? I want to repeat a question that we asked earlier. What did Jesus say about these works? Don't tell anybody. <laughs> not that. What did he say about those works? Oh. Bear witness about me and... If you don't believe what I'm telling you, believe, believe the works. works. Believe right. the works that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. You know, I yeah. think we're over time today, but no one is keeping track of our minutes. I'm looking at uh, at my yeah. submission, and we can't do the rest of the summation today. We just can't. Uh, mm -hmm. So next time, if if God is willing to put us together again, I, I really enjoy this. I enjoy your participation. Uh, <laughs> even if you're silent, I enjoy your participation. And <laughs> I just want you to know that we're doing something here for your faith and for the faith of anyone who happens to come by and, and watch. We never know what God is going to do. You know, right. he couldn't do those things before because no one was sitting in the ante room to the uh, to the conference room where we were studying together on Sunday morning, there was no normally no one sitting out there kind of listening in. Uh, once in a while it happened. Oui. Yeah, like uh, a couple of children. <laughs> so I want to pray with you, and uh, and and uh, well, my clock says we're over an hour. Lord God, uh, you've given us time together. You've given us your word. You have shown us that Jesus, your son, is true God and true man, and we believe in him. We trust in him for all things. Uh, please make application of these wonderful miracles of Jesus to our faith and to the faith of others, that we may know him who is the Christ, son of the living God. And that believing in him, we might have life in his name to serve him all the days of our lives and have joy in doing so. We ask you that and for that great privilege of carrying your name to the world. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Pastor. Blessed Thanksgiving to everybody. Happy yeah. Thanksgiving to you.
Same here. Same from Christine. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, Thank you, Pastor. We're still on recording.